contra a outra. Super. No, the yeah. yeah. X-rays. Yeah. X-ray yeah. Okay, that's not what we were going for. So we had a good laugh <laughs> in the studio, and we said, okay, no, we don't want Superman. And part of what's creating that is this in and out and this kind of suck to his nose thing. But we like the intensity of coming from him out. So this is how you learn by doing or work by doing, really. So then this is the next, or, you know, close to the next iteration. So you want to play for me? No. <laughs> That'd be great. I some improvisation. Then the question is, how much improvisation is happening, right? And how will we notice? How do we really track this? Well, that's why we make these scores. Which I also have a hard time in this interface. Oh, it's going to have the same problem, isn't it? Yeah. So, if you look up here, there are color blocks behind these curved lines. You can see the color blocks. So that, those are the thematic material of the work. There are 26 themes in this dance. Set choreographed themes. They're very precise. And they don't actually get buried, except in orientation, timing, and number of dancers, which is something that someone over here was also noticing. Yeah? The orange is improvisation. The turning of the fan. And let's be clear a lot of artistic conceptual choices go into making this fan. It's not just sort of slave to data. It's data as rigorous connection to the source. So we, we really stayed close to this choreographic resource, and there's important <laughs> rigor for us there. The data was one, one avenue for that. But we're also close conceptually. So we spent three years together understanding CounterPoint with Forsyth, with his company, and with each other. I mean, Matt Lewis and I spent hours debating, he's a computer scientist, the parameters of counterpoint and how much they could be constrained or not to describe them. And then his, his response was to create this contrapuntal fan. So it's these kinds of processes. That she observes in this, in this way. Right. So she must have drawn that and that and that she, thing. And then, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was still his choreography, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I mean, yeah. I was doing the things I, I, I remembered doing uh, the last time, but trying to interpret her... Exactly. Mm -hmm. How the notation was made. Beautiful. Yeah. From which perception? So this is this kind of combining of, of world views, yeah. yeah, and the group process. And you start to get a share of vocabulary. And then you can see how something like Giannis and Surreal that we watched in the beginning, how they can redefine these alignments because they're so deeply in each other's worlds. Yeah? yeah? You start to really understand the vocabulary, yeah. even after half an hour. Yeah? I mean, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for taking the risk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't hurt anybody. Yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop dancing. Our one great designer. <laughs> so I said I want a more organic feel. I want to have a and I gave her the metaphor of a spider web. Mm -hmm. um, that there's this kind of elastic attention that it goes out like this, but then it's still elastic. So, so then we, we got Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. He's home. <laughs> so again, it was like great. We don't want Spider Man, but. We do like that kind of livingness of the line. That was really important development, actually. And we went through all kinds of iterations of light. We also thought about leaving them in the space much longer. 
Mm. So you'd see this sort of network of attention that's left over mm -hmm. from the development of the dance. And then we play with all different things <laughs> like this. You know, so they're, they're, um, they're exercises in thinking.